Hi everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Midweek Market Update. I'm Ashley Rosser with Victory Fiduciary and today what I want to get into is just the fact that the market continues to be um, tripped up and stumbles over the fact that we have a lack of progress on the stimulus bill. And so we've really seen over the past um, three trading days fairly significant weakness in the market. These are things that we did talk about last week. I said that really sloppiness in the market between now and the election, not only would it not be out of the ordinary, it's kind of what we're expecting at this point. And so I think though really what's continuing to really drive the market in its unnervedness is the fact that we really, we just have nothing um, on the table right now. The market, it's almost like it's seeking this stimulus like a drug. We're requiring more and more effort for the market just to kind of tread water. And what's happening is if we don't get what we've had all along, not only are we not moving forward, but we're actually beginning to move backwards. These are things we've talked about for months now that these were concerns about the fact that we were in a market that has been overvalued, propped up by um, additional um, assistance that's really not sustainable long term and reasons for why we've had concerns significant for the market. So we do continue to stumble um, when we look at just kind of where we've been moving, at least in the short term. I'm going to talk to you about just some concerns that we continue to have in the short term and kind of, you know, what we're thinking uh, moving forward. I'm going to give you this caveat though. It is Tuesday at 2.45 and so you're watching this video on Wednesday. A lot may have happened between the 24 hours of when this video is actually going to be posted um, right now. Nancy Pelosi is going to be meeting with Steve Nushin, hopefully coming up with some sort of a stimulus agreement. Um, and I think it's going to go one of two ways. One is that they will somehow find a way to be able to get their differences kind of sorted out and we will have some sort of a stimulus bill. I think markets will respond very favorably to that. And I think that we'll see kind of a push, um, even potentially to, um, to getting back to the highs that we were at or talks will stall. And I think that that will absolutely deflate markets even further, at least in the short run and markets will be very disappointed. So it's kind of like, this will be a, a, a fun, we'll have to see what happens um, tomorrow. But like I said, my son is a soccer game tonight or tomorrow night, I'm sorry. So I thought I'd try to get this recorded today so I could get this out for you. So we will see. Wanted to show you that this is a really clear picture of just how dependent the market is right now on this stimulus. So this is going to be, um, this would have been Friday. So this is what the market has done since Friday and it's been a whole lot of, well, negative returns. And again, and this is all because of the fact that the wind was taken out of the market sale, realizing that stimulus before the election is becoming more and more unlikely. And so this happened yesterday. So this was actually really unexpected, though that significant drop there. Markets were down almost 2% for the day yesterday. And again, that came from um, realizing that talks were stalled and that it is becoming more likely that we will not see anything. Now markets are up a little bit today, but again, it's early. It's 2.45. There's still an hour and 15 minutes left in our trading day. And um, that's actually a really long time for the markets right now. A lot can happen in uh, an hour. So we'll see what happens. I think markets are really hoping that we're going to get some good news today uh, regarding our stimulus talks that are going on again at three o'clock. 15 minutes from today, so we'll see. But just again, wanted to show you, we are completely dependent right now on additional assistance because we're seeing signs of economic growth beginning to slow. I'm gonna show you that in a few more slides. So I just thought this was an interesting kind of way to show that. So biggest issue I see, biggest risk in the market um, right now that I absolutely see is the election that could be um, contended, meaning so if we have an election and we do not who know who the winner is, which we will not know who the winner is the night of the election just because of how many states are doing mail-in ballots, but to have a contested election at this point um, I think would really devastate markets in the short term. So the markets have already basically priced in what happens if Joe Biden wins, what happens if Trump wins. So those have kind of already most likely been worked in. We may see a little bit of volatility um, depending upon who actually comes out as the winner. But what the markets are not prepared for now is to not know who our winner is going to be. And so um, I just want to kind of show you this. So 
Here is our rally. This is where we were up at the top there. That would be September 1. We had just a really fairly um, sharp corrective process that happened through the month of September. And then we really have rallied fairly nicely back up. Remember I told you relative strength finally did shift positive. That was when we took additional positions. We increased our equity holdings um, by another 15% when we saw that relative strength shift. Have had a nice little rebound here. Now here we are though, now we're beginning to kind of tread water and even stumble some back at the top here. And so here's what I want to show you. These are risks that I see at least in the short term for the market. So our first line of support is going to be right here that would represent about 8% of a decline. And so I think it's very reasonable that between now and the election or shortly thereafter, we could see an 8% decline at least short term in the market, especially when we talk about the fact that there's so many unknowns. Markets do not like unknowns. They don't like to be hit by surprise. They can kind of take any situation, you know, be thoughtful about it, as thoughtful as a, as a market can be, but they can actually then digest it and then price things in and move on. But not knowing, that's a really tricky thing for markets. So our first line of support would be right here at 8%. Now, if we were to violate this and come down to our 200 moving day average, that would represent a total decline of about 11%, not out of the question at all. So we are fairly overvalued again. It's, isn't it funny how quickly we can go from having a significant decline to being overvalued again? And so really investors are kind of all in again, really riding this stimulus though, really hoping that stimulus, stimulus will come and save the day. So markets don't like to be disappointed. And so my concern here though is that if we don't get this stimulus, markets will at least be disappointed in the short run. Combine that with a contested election. And uh, I think it is, we could see a decline of 11%. Not saying that we definitely will. Things though as investors we need to be kind of aware of. It's really easy to kind of get caught in with the, I'm just gonna go along with what everybody else is doing. But the problem is everybody keeps saying that kind of continues to drag a market up without having the legs to stand on it, then something comes out of nowhere like shutting down an economy um, for two weeks or having a contested election. Um, so these are all things that could absolutely take this market and, and, and really, at least in the short run, cause a significant corrective process to begin. These are things that I think you should be paying attention to right now, at least be aware of. We certainly are at this point. Thought this was interesting. So what happens when an election um, becomes contested? Well, we actually have some history to go back on. So if we look back at um, the year 2000, so that was the year that Bush and Gore, we remember had that election and there were recounts happening, particularly in Florida, and we didn't actually know um, the actual outcome of the election until December um, of that year. And so this is where we were the night before the election. And so you can see markets did not like not knowing what was going on. And so we can see at the ab absolute bottom of that period of time, it was down about 7.6%, which back then when we look at where the markets were, that was pretty significant to see. So absolutely can we see short-term volatility related to this election? Yes. And so I think it's something that we should be mindful of and that we should be thinking of. And so, um, and again, it actually, it took over, um, over a month for then the Supreme Court to finally be able to rule on who actually won that election. And so in the situation that we are now in a normal market, this was significant volatility. So when we look at the market that we're in right now today, it's kind of like everything goes out the window. I mean, everything is heightened. We are seeing volatility right now that we just, we have, some advisors have never experienced in their career. And so when we you know, I can come out here and tell you that the market was down almost 2% yesterday for the day, even though it had started being up and positive and futures had been up, and that's kind of like par for the course. So we are in an extremely um, uncharted territory. When we look at volatility, when we look at valuations, when we look at our ac actual economic um, conditions, which uh, unfortunately in some areas are beginning to deteriorate some, um, absolutely this could be at least in the short term um, pretty tricky for the market to kind of get through so i thought this is interesting so this is um, we're showing s p 500 versus the citigroup economic surprise index 
And so I just kind of came across this last week. I thought this was interesting. So what happens is with this index here, it basically takes Wall Street's expectations of what's going to happen within the economy and then actually shows what's actually happening. And so here you can see obviously back in March where we had a significant dip and then man, this thing just flew off the charts here. Well, you can see we have a really sharp decline now in this economic surprise index, meaning that Wall Street is beginning to be disappointed by actual economic recovery. And these are things that you know we've been talking about since May. Things like, you know, when we looked at our recovery, was this going to be V-shaped or was it going to be a W? Had we actually seen all of the damage that had been done? And you know, the answer is I think there's still more that, to come that we need to process. Uh, we're getting right ahead into flu season and we're seeing states begin to surge again with COVID. And so the question is going to be, what's the impact of that going to be? We've already priced in COVID into the market, but we haven't priced in what happens if some of these states become devastated by a second onslaught of infections and have to kind of backtrack reopening and how will businesses respond to that. So interestingly enough, when we look, when this index has a sharp sudden decline, like what we're seeing right now, S&P 500 returns tend to drop fairly dramatically in the short run. So not foolproof, just thought it was interesting, something that uh, we'll be keeping an eye on in the weeks moving forward. So what should we do with what we've given? You know, we know the election's coming. We know there's kind of a whole lot of unknowns. And what you should do is really what we should be doing all the time. You really need to be looking at portfolio, looking at your risk. Are you comfortable with the risk in your portfolio? If you really didn't like how September felt, that means you probably had too much risk in your portfolio. And so I hope that last time when we talked about this, that you did take that opportunity. We said that as rallies happen, take that as an opportunity to maybe reduce some of that risk, um, take some money maybe off the table, add it to some areas of hedging. You know, you can raise a little bit of cash in your portfolio. You don't need to be 100% in cash. But I would say that if we do see a bump in the next couple days because of stimulus hopes, might be something that we could consider to be a sellable rally, meaning take some of those profits and then either maybe put it into somewhere, um, you know, that would be considered a hedge in your portfolio. Because again, there's a lot of unknowns here. And so the one thing that I know is that we don't know everything that's going to happen certainly so we have to take the information that we have at hand and then make decisions for our clients for that and sometimes that means that we just say we're just going to sit back and just kind of we're going to make sure that things become a little clearer and so you don't need to be 100 percent in cash um, we took some opportunities within the past few weeks as we saw different things shift after we went through that decline of adding additional positions um, but I do think that it's time to pay attention. Have really tight stops on your investments if you can. Know what your threshold is to be able to, um, to, to put a stop loss in. You know, you may also even want to um, be able to um, realize what's happening. And if your losers are losing, sell them quick. Don't let them continue to lose. Um, let your winners continue to run and take those laggards out of your portfolio because right now there's more unknowns than are knowns. And so that can be really tricky to navigate. And so that's what I wanted to get into today. Again, it's Tuesday. You are watching this Wednesday. A lot may have happened in the last day. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with this stimulus bill. I always am I'm so thankful we've had so many new followers within the past few um, weeks. One thing that I'll leave you with is that we are actually in the process of um, finishing a brand new studio that we have built specifically for these video series. The, um, the feedback has been great. We've had a lot of new followers, people that um, have just kind of come in that I've had some interaction with. So this thing has really began to kind of take off on a life of its own. And so I'm happy that you're here and I hope that you'll follow us next week. So I hope that you are having a great day. Stay safe and we will see you next week.